اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اما بعد عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي اولا بتقوى الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى في السر والعلانيه والمنشط والمكره لعلكم تفلحون brothers and sisters first of all i praise almighty allah for his countless blessings for the gift of faith and health and family and prosperity and abundance we enjoy in this country and the security and peace and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to protect us and shower us all with his mercies and may he also inspire us to always turn to him in repentance thanking him for the blessings and beseeching his mercy and protection and seeking refuge in him i bear witness there is none worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator and sustainer of the worlds i also bear witness that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been sent as the final messenger he has been sent as a mercy for the entire creation today i want to continue on the topic we started last week last week we mentioned about the three vices the three tox toxins spiritual toxins or grave sins that which cardinal sins that we should guard against and today i am going to talk about the three virtues that every one of us may do well to reflect and emulate and try our best to practice these virtues so that it become the part of our personality or character uh the principle in islam the philosophy of spiritual training in islam is when you practice something consistently it becomes your character and it becomes what you are you are what you do repeatedly every day so even if we don't have this we can practice them and consistently if we do so and ask the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in doing so surely we will be able to form these virtues and and they incorporate them into our character uh, the first thing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the virtue uh, salatun munjiyat he called them the virtues that would save individuals and societies actually if you reflect deeply on each of these points you will see where communities fail and they are, they go down and you can see how communities rise when they have this kind of virtues practice on an individual and collective level number one is al adl fi ar rida wa al ghadab fi al ghadab wa ar rida the ability to stand for truth and justice to speak the truth whether you are angry or you are pleased you know when we are angry we go out of control and we lose that sense of fairness and justice when we are provoked when we face aggression even this is an example when we are attacked you know we blame everything for the other party the enemies and we fail to see Uh, we will lose that sound judgment uh, one of the greatest uh, teachings of the quran is the universe is created by allah subhanahu wa taala in truth with justice uh, and god has sent down mizan scales of judgment li yaqub an nas bil qist so that human beings conduct their affairs on on terms of justice and equity you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is ordered to say who oh, is all already you know he is told by allah subhanahu wa taala 
you know, to stand firmly uh, upright and don't be swayed by the whims and fancies. And I have been commanded by Allah to fear, to deal with you in justice, to establish justice. So the Prophet وسلم, is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the main imperative commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for for him and the Muslim community is that they should stand forth as witnesses of truth and justice. There are many verses in the Quran, over a dozen verses speaking about justice. And in one place Allah says, when you speak, be just. Even your speech saying the truth, standing for justice, is against your interest or the interest of your kid and family, your, your parents and children. So we are to stand for truth, for justice. You know, this training, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trained his companions to always stand for truth and justice. And we have a beautiful example I want to mention to you. Uh, there is a case, uh, Umar al-Khattab, who he was a man who was, you know, when he's angry, he goes out of control. But Bilal al-Khan used to tell people about Umar, if you see Umar angry, just recite the words of Allah, the Quran, and he will come to his senses. And, you know, he would kind of walk off and he would abide immediately he will retract if he's being carried away to be unfair as soon as you're reminded he will change the course so here is a beautiful example from umar there are many examples from umar on this once uh, he is you know after they had arrived in medina he saw his wife arguing with him questioning him so this was not the way she used to interact with him in Makkah. So he asked, how come you changed now? So she asked him, are you better than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Your own daughter Hafsa argues with him, questions Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Omar immediately rushes to Hafsa Radiallahu and asks, do you argue with the Prophet? Do you question Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Hafsa replied, Ya Abati, oh my dear dad, are you going to interfere between Rasulullah and his wife? And you know what? Immediately Umar realized his mistake and he said, Adda Batani Hafsa. Hafsa trained me, mentored me, you know, helped me to see the truth to recognize that I am wrong. So he submitted. So this is the great quality that Islam wants us. The strongest person is not the one who can knock you out in a wrestling match. The strongest person is the one who can control his anger when he's provoked. So, this is a very important concept and we need to train ourselves to have this. Uh, you know, there are a lot of traditions about people who are just how they are honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest thing in Islam for a ruler is that he has to be just. And that's why Ibn Taymiyyah rahmahullah said, justice is the soul of Sharia and the soul of Islamic law. Where there is justice, there is Sharia. Where there is no justice, there is no Sharia. Even if we claim that you have implemented the Sharia, if there is no justice on the ground, that means the Sharia that you applied is not the Sharia of Allah. You see how? And the Prophet said, one of the first person to be shaded by the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment is Imamun Adil a just ruler. 
And Ibn Taymiyyah also said, Allah may support a just ruler who, who may be a kafir over an unjust ruler who may be a Muslim. Because Allah, the whole universe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, the foundation is justice. Next thing is al qasdu fil faqri wal ghida. Moderation in penury, in poverty, as well as in abundance. Moderation. The Prophet said, whoever practices moderation, he will never go poor. He will never starve. And Allah teaches us one way we should, when you spend, don't stretch out your hand. Why? Just be modest. And, and don't be stingy, holding off. Stick to the path of moderation. You know, those when they spend, they will not be wasteful and nor they will be withholding miserly, niggardly. They will stick to the path of moderation. You know, today we see a lot of wasteful habits. And Muslims are, are most sometimes we may think we are, I think we are in the forefront of it. In fact, Rasulullah has warned us against it. You know, he said, alaykum al -fakr. I am not worried about poverty. I am worried about abundance and prosperity that is going to come your way because Allah will open the treasures of the earth for you. And you will be so prosperous, you know. And the Prophet said one of the signs of the hour is people who are shepherds, tending camels and sheep, all of a sudden become super rich and weighing and racing, competing with one another in building mansions taller and taller. One person big tall tower, another Another country builds a taller one. As if Rasulullah is witnessing what's happening now. Because one person builds a tall one mansion, another competes and then build a taller one, taller one and taller one. They will continue to do that. And this is what's happening. And he also said, I am worried about abundance Allah opening for you. You becoming so prosperous and rich, and then you will compete and rivalry over the goodies of this world, comforts of this world, exceeding all limits. And then what will happen? You will be destroyed as Allah destroyed other nations. This is very, very important reminder from Rasulullah So it is wrong to be extravagant, to be wasteful, even in food, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Kulu Allah said, eat and drink without exceeding, without being wasteful. But at the same time, the other extreme also is, when Allah has given you enough, you know you need to express it. How? By wearing modestly, good dress and good things, yes. Because man harrama zinat Allah, who, who can forbid? the good things that I have provided for my servants, they are allowed. So once a man comes to Rasulullah appearing in a very bad, you know, old clothes and things like that. So the prophet felt sad on seeing, seeing his appearance and asked him, you know, are you, you have enough to survive? You have property, wealth? He said, Allah has blessed me with so much. You name it, everything I have. Then he said, Carl told him and said, you know, when Allah has given you so much, Allah want you to make use of it. Because in Allah Jamil and Yuhibbul Jamal, Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. So make use of those blessings and of course, without going into excess, you know. So this is another important, you know, virtue that we need. We need to develop moderation in our habits, uh, in the way we live, of course, 
starting with the house, starting with the car, starting with the furniture. We should not go overboard and be excessive, be wasteful. We should, you know, the Prophet Umar al-Khattab said, you know, when we were poor, we were very patient and we were successful. We passed that test because Allah tested it with poverty, with deprivation and suffering and trials. And we passed the test. But you know, when Allah opened, we became rich and abundant and enjoyed. Some of us failed. Many of us failed. So ask, remind yourself this, this question, where we are heading? Are we heading the way of those nations that Allah warned us in the Quran, they were destroyed because of injustice and because of their wasteful habits. And the third concept, virtue that Allah subhanahu wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us to develop, khashiyatullahi fi sirri wal alaniya. Fear Allah in secret as well as in public. Most of us, Alhamdulillah, we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we try to observe the laws of Islam. But then when we are in a situation faced with temptation, many of us fall, fail. And the Prophet also warned about this thing, about his people. And you see, when you read this hadith of the Prophet wasalam, you will see Rasulullah is living now in our midst. He said, you know, he said, there will be people in my ummah. They will appear before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with so much achievements, great works they have done, great masajid and this and that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will scatter all of the just ashes thrown into the wind. They are not going to benefit from their great works. Sauban asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Sauban was uh, around the Prophet, helping him in his source, a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He's the one who asked the Prophet, how can I enjoy your companionship in Jannah? Because he was crying. Rasulullah, I have this, your companionship in this world. How can I have it in the next world? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gave you the prescription. You know, help yourself by prostrating as much as possible before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, beseeching his mercy and forgiveness. So Sauban said, ask Rasulullah when he said that, you know that there will be people in my ummah who appear with great achievements, which people can see and uh, you know and and attribute to their to their names. So Sauban asks, "Who are they? Are they from us? Do they belong to us?" The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "You know, yes, they are your own brothers from your own kith and kin. You know, trace back to the." raise even Arabs. That may be what the Prophet meant. And they even be stand up for tahajjud prayers. But you know what is wrong with them? When they are all by themselves, they break all the limits that Allah has set. And then we indulge in those sins adultery, fornication, drinking, you name it. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us. وَكَفَى بِرَبِّكَ بِدُونَهُ بِعِبَادِهِ خَبِيرًا بَصِيرًا Your Lord is knows. He is well aware of the sins that his servants commit. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلِ إِنَّمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is never heedless of, of what you do. You know, Because 
they were we were we were thinking that we think that we never thought we never imagine that our ears our eyes and our skin will testify against us but allah says in the on the day of judgment allah will put a seal on the mouth and our hand will speak our feet will speak our skin will speak you know so that is why the greatest thing in islam is for us to fear allah ittaqillah haythu ma kunt you know prophet was asked how can i get to jannah he said ittaqillah haythu ma kunt be mindful of allah wherever you are and of course for someone to say to someone ittaqillah is a great honor and the person who is hearing it should comply and we have two beautiful examples comparing the two types of people we have the case of harun ar rashid who was one of the greatest uh, rulers legendary rulers of the abbasid khilafat he was on a, he was strolling on his horse and he was stopped by a jewish man who told him amir al mumin in ittaqillah o commander of the faithful be mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as the caliph heard that he dismounted and prostrated to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then when he came up someone told him this was a jew jewish man harun ar rashid said do you want me to be among those who is told to be mindful of allah he becomes so proud that he violates the limits goes beyond the limits to think himself self sufficient and self righteous now modern times husri mubarak was after umrah he came to medina he was in the raula visiting the grave of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, after raula going to the graves and somebody from egypt a scholar met him from far and greeted him ya rais taqillah o president be mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as he said that his guards drew, drew, took him out of the masjid dumped him into a van and from there to jadda and straight flown to cairo to the prison where he stayed 90 years so look at the compare and contrast and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to recognize to ponder these three virtues and try to to practice so that these virtues this becomes our character may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way we can make sure we save ourselves and our families our communities the more we practice them surely we will be guaranteed protection from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum